All right, here is the new version of the Whiplash Track Editor. We've come a long way since the old Rainbow Road video got pretty much every surface rendering and nearly all the values in the track file figured out. First thing to know is that you no longer have to worry about whether or not a file is mangled. The editor can automatically detect that and load tracks from either the release files or the old unmangled beta. It does only save as unmangled, but that's okay because the release version of the game loads those just fine. The only caveat is that it's important for your palette and texture files to be in the same directory or you'll only be able to see the geometry with no textures. The main view of the editor is an OpenGL preview where you can see Whiplash rendered in glorious 4K resolution. You can move around with FPS no clip controls because we're all gamers here. There is also a raw data view that shows you exactly what values will be saved in the file, which might be useful for debugging. Both views highlight which chunks you are editing, which is a good segue to the first widget I want to talk about, display settings. All the widgets can be shown and hidden, popped out, resized, docked on the sides, tabbed, etc., and they should save and load their positions when you clo close and open the application. Display settings let you toggle on and off all the different surfaces of the track, as well as show the wireframes and a number of other things. Wireframes are useful for highlighting a particular section or showing where it would be if the surface is hidden in the current chunk. The attached last toggle is useful when making a track from scratch. In the game, the last chunk is tied to the first, but if it's really far away, you just get an extremely long cursed hallway to the start finish. So try to link up the ends nicely. You can also toggle AI lines, signs, and indicators for where there are audio triggers like the announcer going, whoa, and stunts. I have also added a test car that you can snap to the AI lines and see what it will look like in game. And since it follows your selected chunk, you can even use your scrolly wheel in the chunk selector and make rooming noises to pretend it is driving. All the cars are available, including the open wheel cheat car. The meat of the editor is in the edit chunk data widget. Here are all the different surfaces. You can stretch them, rotate them around, change the textures or colors, everything you can do in the game. Some things are a little obtuse, like if you want to change where the outer walls attach, you have to do that with the outer floor surface dialog. And some surfaces can disable other surfaces when they are disabled. I tried to make sure it is indicated when a surface is hidden by another one, but we haven't figured out all the intricacies of the surface flags yet, so if you're doing something non-standard, don't be surprised if it looks different in-game. There is also a widget for adding signs. Each chunk can have one sign, and it can be positioned, rotated, and textured, textured just like the track surfaces. It's not perfect yet. I have the textures drawing in some places that should just be colors and other little issues, but it mostly works now. One thing to be aware of is the signs that are just 2D billboards, like Balloon and Big Ball, I have set up to just face the direction of the track. The yaw, roll, and pitch do nothing. In-game, these will always face the camera, and I thought this was the most reasonable solution for the editor. Here's the audio widget. If you want to add an audio trigger, this is the one to use. You can set a target speed and pick a sound file that will play if a car is slower than the trigger and faster. They are indicated by a little megaphone, or at least I hope it looks like a megaphone. And here's the stunt widget. This is still very much a work in progress. They do not animate in the preview, so all you get is a little X to indicate that a stunt exists on this chunk. You can also edit one value progressively in series. This is useful for making constant radius turns, corkscrews, loops, etc. One of Aspirations is additions. Finally, you can edit the global track settings. The only other thing of note, I guess, is a little debug window that shows some potentially useful debugging information if you run into issues like black textures or something. Debug chunk data is the old editing widget that has every piece of track data organized in the way it is in the file because we didn't know what most things were at the time, with a fancy but annoying edit mode system that made more sense when the track editor was really just a glorified text editor and analyzer. I kept it in there because there are still some values in the third row that we don't really know what to do with yet. They might be related to forcing draw orders or maybe replay camera positions. Now let's take a quick look at the code. All of this is available to download on the GitHub. The external libraries I used are included in the repo, so you should be able to just git and build provided you have Visual Studio installed. Theoretically, this should be able to be built cross-platform, but I have not bothered to make make files for GCC yet. The general idea is that the track editor is just a Qt wrapper over a library that includes all the important stuff related to the game. The library is built statically because I don't like including a bunch of DLLs with things. I have not bothered to make a DLL interface for it yet. If you want to see how to really use the library, the main file to look at is Track Preview in the Track Editor. 
The most important piece of the library is track data, which loads the track file and generates all the math for the geometry based on the chunk data. The other important piece is the shape factory, which is a singleton that makes 3D models from the track data and the models in the game. The other game models are all in header files in the plans folders. The third project in the repo is just a simple parsing app I wrote to generate C++ headers for the game models from the disassembly. There is a batch script included that runs it for every model in the game automatically in case I need to change it later. Anyway, that's about it. It's far from perfect, but it's in a state where it could actually be used to make custom whiplash tracks now. I'll keep updating it as we discover more arcane knowledge about the game. Special thanks to Aspirations for all his work autistically poking at the track files to discover what the different values do and helping with the app. Phonic for his WCD8 tool, I never would have been able to get this far or have things like models from the game without it. Ninjata Bob, Kita, Real Brazil Hours, Rannick, Divas, and Doc4, and probably some other people I'm forgetting all helped to make this possible.